Hello, and welcome to the second part of Learn Your Labs as we continue our discussion of the thyroid panel. Today, we'll be discussing free T3, free T4, and reverse T3. Please remember that these presentations are not intended to diagnose or treat any condition, but they're just here for your education so that you may more fully take responsibility for your own health. By way of refreshing our memory, We'll remember that we have the hypothalamus. And the hypothalamus, when it senses that blood levels of T4 and T3 are low, it will release a thyrotropin releasing hormone. This will stimulate the pituitary gland to release thyroid stimulating hormone, which will stimulate the thyroid to release T4 and T3. T4 and T3 are iodine containing hormones with T4 which is thyroxine has four iodine molecules and T3 which is triiodothyronine has three iodine, iodine molecules. We remember that T4 is the inactive form of the hormone. It's not usable by the body in this state. So it has to be converted into T3 and this occurs at the cellular level and mostly in the liver, the kidneys, and the muscles, although it does occur in other cells and tissues as well. And this conversion to T3 is the biological or usable form of thyroid hormone that the body can use. And remember that these, horm these hormones uh, regulate our entire metabolic rate, our heart rate, our energy production, blood pressure. Every system in our body is affected by these thyroid hormones. So what is free T3? and free T4. Well, these are unbound hormones. So what happens when the thyroid hormone, the thyroid releases T4 and T3, they bind to a carrier protein, which carries these hormones to the cells where they will be used. But they are not usable as long as they are bound to these carriers, which are protein molecules called globulins. So what we are really concerned at looking at is how, how much unbound free T3 and T4 we have because it is in the unbound state that they can be made usable for the body. What we want to see in a lab result is a free T4 level of about 1.4 to 3.8 and a free T3 level of about 2.3 to 4.2. However, many people find that they feel much better when their free T3 range is in the upper 75% of this range, which would be about 3.7. So that's a, a good target that many people are shooting for. So what is reverse T3? Well, sometimes the body wants to conserve energy. So instead of converting uh, T4 to T3, it will convert T4 to reverse T3. Now this can occur in times of chronic physical and emotional stress. It can occur in times of acute it injury or illness chronic disease, and other, other factors can contribute to this as well. So that's why we want to look at all, a complete thyroid uh, panel and not just a TSH level as we discussed in the first presentation. And we are most concerned when we talk about the reverse T3, we're most concerned about the T3 reverse T3 ratio, which we want to see as greater than 20. So 
when you are concerned about your thyroid and the doctor wants to run some tests, be sure to ask for a TSH, a free T3, free T4, a reverse T3, and the T3 to reverse T3 ratio. This will give you a better picture of what's going on between your thyroid gland and your cells because sometimes our symptoms are not necessarily because we're not producing enough thyroid stimulating hormone or enough T3 or T4, but maybe there's something going on with the conversion between T4 and T3, and we want to see what that is. Next week, we'll be talking about thyroid antibodies that I recommend to being tested for. So until then, stay well.